We are agreed. Thank you. We turn now to topical questions, and we have one question today. It's from Bruce Crawford. Uh, thank you, President Officer, to ask the Scottish Government what its response is to the UK budget. Cabinet Secretary Derek Mackay. Uh, yesterday's UK budget failed to live up to the Prime Minister's commitment to end austerity. With the continuation of UK welfare reforms and less funding than had previously been promised to Scotland, it was a budget of broken promises and falls short on the £600 million commitment to the NHS. The Scottish Government has already set out plans to support the NHS in the years to come, but has already identified a £50 million shortfall in the funding uplift for 2019-20 that was promised by the Tory UK Government only four months ago. There was little in the way of new funding for our wider public services, and even including the NHS funding uplift, Scotland's resource block grant will still be almost £2 billion lower in real terms in 2019-20 than it was in 2010-11, i.e. when the Tories came into office. Bruce Crawford. I uh, thank the Cabinet Secretary. But does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that while there are elements of the budget that should be given a cautious welcome, it's also equally true that, disappointingly, the Chancellor failed to respond to the very legitimate, con the very legitimate concerns of the Waspy women from the 1950s who feel cheated and betrayed by the UK Government in regard to their pensions? And does he agree that the Chancellor also failed to address the fundamental flaws in the miserable universal credit system, particularly as new re analysis by the Resolution Foundation today has shown that three quarters of the £12 billion cuts to Social Security announced by the UK Government in 2015 will remain in place after yesterday's budget? Cabinet Secretary. Well, first of all, the, the Chancellor could have gone a much further in terms of stimulating the economy, giving justice to the WASPy women eh, and investing in public services. And he could have done so while staying within his own fiscal mandate and his own fiscal targets. According to the OBR, he had fiscal headroom of around £15.4 billion and has chosen to keep that in reserve rather than spend it in a way that could have done the above. And I do say it is galling that in this uh, climate that the Chancellor has chosen not to give justice uh, to the WASP women. More than two million women paid their national insurance contributions throughout their lives in the expectation that they would receive their state pension and receive that at a certain age only for the goalposts to have been moved by the UK government. And in relation to welfare, the Tories continue their pernicious welfare policies. And in terms of tax, the independent analysis from the Resolution Foundation reveals that overall impact of Tory tax and benefit policies will once again help the rich at the expense of the poor, with the poorest fifth of households set to be £400 a year, worse off by 2023-24, whilst the richest fifth are set to gain £390 a year. Bruce Crawford. Thank you, Secretary. Can I say, in regard to income tax, the Chancellor also announced his intention to raise the higher rate threshold to £50,000 earlier than expected. Given that decisions on the higher rate threshold are devolved to this Parliament, the Chancellor's plans do not apply in Scotland. Therefore, people are asking, what is the Scottish Government's position on this matter? And when will he make it clear what his Government's intentions are in regard to the higher rate threshold? Well, of course, in essence, I'll make that clear in the Scottish budget as I present it on the 12th of December. But I take some pride in the fact uh, that I've been Finance Secretary that's ensured we've got the fairest income tax system anywhere in the United Kingdom. And for a majority of people, they pay less tax. And this is the lowest tax part of the UK. The Tories have once again chosen tax cuts for the richest in society and we will choose a fairer, a more progressive path. And I will set out the details in the Scottish Budget on the 12th of December. Just for information, there are seven members who have indicated they'd like to ask questions. The first is Dean Lockhart. Presiding officer, despite what we've just heard, this is a UK budget that delivers for the people of Scotland. The Cabinet Secretary himself acknowledged yesterday that the Scottish Government's future budget will be increasing as a result of the UK budget. In fact, this UK budget will deliver £1 billion in additional funding to Scotland as a result of Barnet Consequentials, £550 million of additional resource for Scotland's NHS, £43 million of additional spending for Scotland's high streets, £41 million of additional funding to fix potholes across Scotland. So let me ask the Cabinet Secretary this. 
Does he welcome the £1 billion of additional funding coming to Scotland from the UK Conservative Government? Will he follow the Chancellor's lead and invest the additional £43 million for Scotland's struggling high streets? And can he guarantee today that, he, that every penny of the £550 million coming to Scotland as a result of record NHS spending will be spent on Scotland's NHS? Camera Secretary. Last year at the Tory party conference, it was the staging that fell apart. This year, it's the Tory party prime minister's commitment to end austerity that's fallen apart. No, I don't welcome uh, the figures that have been announced by the Chancellor because it represents, just putting NHS aside for one moment, real terms reductions for the rest of Scotland's public services. And in relation to the National Health Service, the Tories promised £600 million and within four months have already shortchanged the NHS in Scotland by £50 million. Pounds. It doesn't undo the damage of the last eight years of Tory government. It doesn't undo the £2 billion real terms reduction that we've endured. And it doesn't undo the pernicious welfare reform that's pushing so many people into poverty. So no, I don't welcome that. And the pothole fund south of the border it will not fill in the huge crater that has been created by the economic Tory mismanagement and the Brexit bungling that's going to cost this whole country dear. James Kelly to be followed by Patrick Harvey. Thank you, Presiding Officer. The Cabinet Secretary must accept that under this SNP government, public services are in crisis. It's demonstrated by the fact that NHS patients are stranded on waiting lists, not able to get the treatment they deserve and the fact that thousands of teachers took to the streets on Saturday to demand a fair pay settlement. Will the Cabinet Secretary use the, his Scottish budget to reverse the chronic underfunding of public services and alleviate the pain being piled on local communities? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I'll deliver a, a balanced and competent uh, budget compared to the incompetence that I saw from the Labour Party last year. And you see, what's really interesting is that I've heard from uh, the Shadow Chancellor, John Macdonald, already, they won't even overturn the Tory tax cuts for the richest in society. The Labour Party are going to accept the Tory tax proposals. So I think the Labour Party communication system has broken down in the same way that their calculator never worked in the first place. But in relation to more money for the NHS, we are allocating more than the Labour Party proposed at the last Scottish Parliament elections. In relation to local government, we're giving more than the Labour Party gives where they are in power in Wales. And in relation to the pay uplift, we departed from the public sector pay cap, even though the Chancellor didn't fund it. Although we're the Labour Party are in power, they will only lift it if the Chancellor pays for it. All talk with the SNP, you get real action and real investment in our public services. Patrick Harvey to be followed by Willie Rennie. This should have been not only a budget to end austerity, but to repair the harm done by austerity. And it should have been a budget to respond to the climate emergency and instead yet again we see a UK government giving away the biggest tax cuts to the richest people uh, and continuing to pursue uh, recklessly an unsustainable economy. But will the Scottish government acknowledge that it needs to respond not only by providing the resources that local communities need but the powers that they need as well to be able to invest for the future and will he give a commitment that we will continue the progress toward a fairer tax system for Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think what uh, Patrick Harvey is referring to is the wider discussion around uh, reform uh, and local authorities. And yes, my door is open uh, to that dialogue. I've described that I'm open to constructive suggestion in that uh, uh, regard. And I do agree with Patrick Harvey in the regressive nature of this UK budget and how it has failed to invest in our public services and stimulate the economy. It is absurd that the Chancellor has in reserve £15.4 billion that could have been unleashed to help stimulate our economy, invest in our public services, undo some of the pernicious welfare reforms that the Tory party is hammering the poor with and has chosen not to. 
So I agree with Patrick Harvey that we should continue to look further as to how we can use our powers to ensure we get the fairest deal possible for all of Scotland's public services. And in relation to climate change, of course, we have to look at the spend that we're undertaking to ensure that we can make that transition to a low carbon economy. Willie Rennie to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Uh, with the hit to the economy, the fall in living standards and the threat to future investment, it is Brexit that casts a dark shadow over this budget. The Chancellor is even now openly talking about an emergency budget in the spring. So what plan does he have to respond to that possibility? And does all this chaos not just show that we need a people's vote to get us out of this Brexit mess? Cabinet Secretary. Uh, well, first of all, uh, in terms of the Prime Minister, uh, what I would point out is the figures that we've received from the Chancellor are contingent upon a deal with the European Union and that working in terms of the Westminster Parliamentary uh, Arithmetic. So if there is no deal, that calamity of a no deal, then yes, the Chancellor will have to uh, return to an emergency budget. And I think it just represents the economic mismanagement at the hands of the Conservatives and the Tory Chancellor. Now, in terms of the position of the European Union, it's well understood the Scottish Government wanted us to stay within the European Union. Short of that, we want to stay within the single market and the customs union. And if we had a deal that achieved that, these numbers would have been better. The Chancellor would have greater economic growth and more resources to allocate. So yes, I do agree. We need to do everything possible to get the least worst Brexit. And this government has made its position uh, clear on how we think we get there and will continue to push for that. Ruth McGuire to be followed by Jackie Bailey. Presiding officer, just four months ago, the UK government trumpeted a swathe of addi additional health consequentials would be available to the Scottish government to spend on our NHS here. Can the cabinet secretary set out, following yesterday's budget, by just how far the Tories' promises have fallen short on delivering what they said they would? Cabinet secretary. Well, I, 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 uh, I, I've heard a slogan that says "Never trust a Tory," and that's exactly uh, why. The Tories promised £600 million to Scotland's NHS. I challenged the Chancellor and I challenged the Chief Secretary to the Treasury. Will that be net £600 million for Scotland's NHS? It transpires after only a matter of minutes that we found out that we've already been shortchanged by around £50 million a year. And I hear the Tories grumbling, saying, well, it's not a lot in the context of £600 million. Five years, that will be over a quarter of a billion pounds over five years denied to the Scottish NHS that was promised by the Tories. You cannot trust the Tories with Scotland's NHS. Jackie Bailey to be followed by Tom Arthur. The SNP Growth Commission said that the Scottish Government should operate the same or lower rate of corporation tax than the UK Government. So do the SNP support a corporation tax cut of 17% or below for big business? Or will you support income tax cuts for ordinary families? Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary, whatever happened to people before the profits of big business? Cabinet Secretary. Well, first of all, independence is the genuine alternative to austerity. And with all those economic levers, we could deliver greater economic growth. Actually, what we propose as a government is targeted investment and relief to stimulate the economy. And no, a direct answer to the question is, I do not support a race to the bottom on tax. And that is exactly what this government has done with the tax powers at our disposal. And incidentally, the Growth Commission figures propose far higher public spending and stimulation of our economy than the Chancellor has announced yesterday. And Tom Arthur. Yesterday's UK government Tory budget failed to implement a real living wage and it perpetuates state sanctioned pay discrimination against young people, with the pay gap between a 16 year old and a 25 year old now standing at a staggering £3.86 per hour. Does the Cabinet Secretary agree with me that this UK government budget fails to deliver for people who are trapped in in work poverty and it is a budget that fails the young people of Scotland? Cabinet Secretary. Yes, it does it fail people in that uh, regard. The welfare reforms are a disaster. It's pushing people to food banks. It isn't making work pay. Um, and the UK government should have stepped back from their implementation of universal credit and some of their other pernicious policies, like the two-child cap. 
In relation to living wage, I think we can take uh, some comfort, but we have got more to do to reach 100%. Uh, we have the highest proportion of people paid the living wage of any UK nation. But of course, the Tories have played games with the living wage. We need a substantial minimum wage and a real living wage and equality for our young people as well uh, in that uh, regard. But it's very telling. If you look at, look at the, resolution, the Resolution Foundation work here, those who are the biggest beneficiaries of this UK budget are the richest in society. Those who are the biggest losers are the poorest in society, telling you that the Tory image may have changed, but their policies and their pernicious approach has not. Can I thank the Minister and the members for getting through all those questions? Uh, that concludes topical questions. We'll move on now to a statement by Jean Freeman, the Cabinet Secretary for Health, on NHS financial overview. I would encourage all members who wish to ask a question of the Health Secretary to press their request to speak buttons as soon as possible.